My name is David Regeer. Um, a former Marine. I served uh, four years active duty, and then during my inactive ready reserve time, the additional four years on your contract, I kind of bounced back and forth um, between military and getting out, military and getting out. But um, I was stationed in Atlanta, Georgia at a reserve unit as an active duty Marine. I uh, was an aviation ordnance technician. I dealt with the, the weapon systems on the Cobra attack helicopter and the Huey. And um, so I did a deployment with uh, that unit twice uh, to Afghanistan in, in the end of 03. And then I did um, another deployment in 07. Uh, the, uh, after I was already out of my four-year contract, I, uh, a close friend of mine who was a gunnery sergeant called me and asked me if I wanted to go with him to Iraq. Art has uh, been an artist my entire life. It's uh, kind of what defined me. Um, kind of lived my life as an observer, really. Also, uh, learning a lot about uh, I guess human psychology just by watching kids run around it didn't really fit in a whole lot growing up uh, so really I guess my point is with that is uh, I think art and uh, as an, an artist you're an observer and um, I live my life as an observer too so it's just natural that I just continued with art just because it's so, so important to who I am today and so that didn't change um, the Marine Corps came about because I kind of drifted around back and forth uh, not much direction and uh, you know, you're always told that art. There's not much to do in art, so art was never anything that I really targeted. It was the the starving artist mentality that wor worried me. So um, I never thought to really focus in and pursue art. And so uh, bounced around until I decided. Uh, uh, the last time I got fired from a job on the way home, I went to a recruiter station only to get a business card to show my parents that uh, I got fired, but I got a business card. I went to get that business card. Uh, they were like, why don't you just take a practice ASVAB? And then I took a practice ASVAB, and then, uh, of course, I scored marginal, like, average, but they made it seem like it was like, oh, I cannot believe this. They're like, get in here. Like, check this out. This, you got a 76. You're like, what? 76? Oh, you can do anything you want. And I'm like, yeah? You did, like, pretty good? And they're like, oh, that's awesome. And so I walked out of there, signed up <laughs> with the Marine Corps. So, um, did the Marine Corps, loved it. It was, uh, I, I, Early on, I, because of my upbringing and appreciating the way we op, the way we coexist together, I I was able to appreciate some things that maybe some other people didn't. And I just drew an M16 sticking in the ground with a helmet on it and some boots, and uh, and then I became the artist recruit. And so started doing battle flags and things, and um, painting with uh, you know uh, paper plates and uh, pencils that I would dip in for brushes and. Um, on sheets stretched over targets from the range. Art found me in boot camp and um, I was lucky for that. And then when I got out, I got to my first unit and my gunnery sergeant asked if anybody could draw. And so I said I could draw. And then next thing I know, I'm drawing the aviation ordinance uh, mascot, the bomb boy. I'm drawing him on our front, the front door of our shop. I immediately was comfortable in the Marine Corps and then um, uh, made my best buddies because of that because I you know was just able to be myself and and be goofy and things like that and then deployed and doing tattoos for people not putting the ink or anything down but I'm um, giving them to them to give their their uh, their artist that's gonna do it and so I have four tattoos on Marines running around somewhere I really missed the structure and I missed my Marines and I missed having younger Marines and I missed um, teaching Marines and so um, you know, I, I enrolled in art school and I just couldn't shake the Marine Corps thing. And so when I had the opportunity to go back, I took it. And so I went, did another year. And then I was like, okay, now I'm ready to get out. And I got out and again, I still missed it and didn't find my place and didn't feel like I belonged. And I got fired from a job from um, having what I thought was a confrontation full attack. And uh, I thought I handled it well, but um, it's a little bit different here in the civilian side. so. Um, got fired and then uh, went through some dark times and did some really interesting art <laughs> during that time too. This piece, I didn't know it at the time, but this piece ended up um, being a really good piece for me as far as it really summing up a lot of the words that I have a hard time um, explaining to people, you know, who I am. This, I put these glass panels in front of my face before I even realized what, what that could possibly mean. I felt like it illustrated great. I, me being an observer, I, this uh, this is a, uh, a great interpretation um, of I'm um, looking out um, from behind uh, obstructions and 
and um, kind of peering into the world and, uh, you know, letting parts of me be seen and, uh, and if there's some red on my face and there's some um, white on my face, which could be, you know, maybe the, the struggle that I have between um, some you know, painful memories and some hopes and dreams and, uh, and some things that, uh, insecurities and, and then um, some things that I really like about myself as well. So I feel like that this one is a, is a, is a, rate, is a really good um, illustration about uh, who I am. So this one is uh, one of those uh, quote dark time ones that uh, I was talking about. This is, um, I call this an explore just because we have several kind of scenes that uh, we explore today and it really, they, it was just one of those kind of free drawing things that just started developing into this kind of surreal environment with multiple settings and things and so in the top left corner it, I started out doing some jellyfish and and uh, and then I so I it's kind of angled at a 45 degree angle of now it's developed into or ultimately became in my mind uh, at, at least in the top left quadrant of this is a is a cave you'll see some stalactites hanging from the ceiling um, and we have we have some uh, kind of uh, reflective water uh, some stagnant water that we might be sitting in and there's some sort of organism that might glow um, you know it's here in the subterranean world and it might have some phosphorescence and it's got tentacles kind of floating on the top and then way back in the back um, you can see um, shadows of stalactites uh, that have no light on them at all and then some beams of light that might be from the head the head uh, lamps of some explorers making their way to this discovery. This is a more recent one. I um, I got a really good deal on a new Wacom tablet, the Cintiq, which is the str the screen that you actually paint on. And I um, I wanted to do a painting on uh, in Photoshop, and I wanted to you know be limited to using just digital versions of tools you would have if you were to do an oil painting. And so this is with the new um, the new blending brush that they have on some of the newer Creative Suite programs, the Photoshop programs. So this is this is a guy. I watched a documentary. I, I love the mountains. Um, I eventually would love to be in the mountains. And I watched a documentary by Kenneth Burns, who did the Civil War series, and the most recently he did the Dust Bowl series. He's a quote that I love about him is he, he says um, his quote is the mountains are calling. I must go. And I feel like that is. That is, uh, I res that resonates with me. That's how I feel.